Right. Once on Christmas Day, I was forced to hitchhike my way home and was picked up by four different drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Where were you going from and to? I was going from London down to Hastings. How old are you? Uh, I was about 17 and a half. And because nothing was running on Christmas Day or you were skint? No, what happened was I was meant to go home on Christmas Eve, but I missed the last train. So you started your journey in London? I did. And how long did it take to get picked up? Um, the first bit? Not long, actually. Ten minutes-ish. And, and he said... Would, would you like to come back and have Christmas lunch with me? I'm very lonely. Seriously, he said that? Yeah. What sort of a man was he? Uh, he, he was a gay man in his mid-70s. How far did you go with him? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, how far on your journey did you go? He, he dro I think he drove me about ten miles, right. something like that. So that's the first person. Yeah. And then, oh, do you remember the second one? A uh, woman yes. who um, picked me up round about the Eltham area, I oh. think. I like a euphemism early on in the show. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been picked up in the Eltham area, haven't we? Actually, you're, you're more accurate than you realise. She, uh, she actually did make a pass at me. You? This is two now. Well, um, she said, where do you want to go? <laughs> uh, and I said, down to the coast, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> did she go down to the coast? Well, what she actually did was she put her arm round my neck and tried to kiss me. She did. What had led her to believe that this was a possibility? What had happened? The mistletoe on the wing mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she tried to kiss me. I opened the door and got out of the car and ran away. Ah, so yeah. that explains the second story. Right, okay. now get to the third one. The, third, the third guy um, was deaf. <laughs> um, <laughs> he... I'll tell you what, if this turns out to be a lie, you deserve a medal for the... <laughs> for, for making this as least plausible as possible en route to the story. But, OK, so he's deaf. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I, I had to write down where I wanted to go. Uh, and you said Hastings on the card? Yeah. What did he say? He didn't say anything. He just started driving. <laughs> oh, my That's a bit God. menacing, isn't it? <laughs> he didn't look scary. And who was the fourth? The, the fourth was a, a farmer. He said that he was fed up with his family, so he <laughs> took me all the way to Hastings. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's having a bad day on Christmas Day and he decides he just he'd rather drive you to Hastings. Well, he said that he told his wife he was going out for a paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end, really, cos he dropped me off where I was going. Did you invite the man in for a mince pie or something? You know? No. You didn't so... even invite him in? No. <laughs> Do you think that's a bit weird? I don't. I think it's the weirdest bit of the story. <laughs> <laughs> He's given you a lift all the way to Hastings no. on Wait, Christmas it... Day. He's the only one who hasn't made a sexual pass at you. <laughs> He's been entirely honourable. Right. Just give him a little bit of a mince right. pie and some brandy butter. <laughs> so what do you think? It, there's a lot of detail in there. I think it's not true. Based on... I think she's just it's got too many characters, like a Tarantino film. <laughs> <laughs> the bit I'm doubting is that... Wouldn't you just write on a piece of paper, Hastings, and hope someone's going to Hastings, rather than anyone going sort of that way, and I'll just keep getting out and getting out? Have you ever hitched hikes? You sound very, very idealistic about it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not getting in a car until I'm going to Hastings. <laughs> What day of the year it is? <laughs> Hastings, no. <laughs> Paul does have a point. That's I'm not very... how it works. You just go a little bit, yeah. and then maybe, and that's part of the fun of of hitchhiking. Well, so you don't try and pretend to me you've ever hitchhiked. I know you well. <laughs> Getting at the back of a Mercedes <laughs> once a week is not hitchhiking. <laughs> I've seen it in films, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, true. Ray thinks it's true. true. It's got to be true. Okay. Too wacky to be made up. So, you think they're too wacky yeah. to be made up? You think they're too wacky to be true? Yeah, I think she, she enjoyed making them up. <laughs> so, what's it going to be, then, Lee? OK, well, we'll, we'll say... Uh, be it on your head, Ray, but we'll say it's the truth. Saying it's the truth. OK, yeah. Joe Brand. Truth or lie? It is... true. <laughs> After a visit to a school fete, I had to tell my neighbour their cat had been run over, while my own face was painted like a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Please, team. <laughs> oh, please be true. Please, please. <laughs> you, you were at the school face as what? As a as a dad, or were you working on the stall doing the face painting or anything? Or were you uh, I, I, there was a sort of shift, so I, I did help uh, with what we wanted the stalls, but I was also there just as a as a parent. What was the stall you were helping on? Bric-a-brac. Bric-a-brac. <laughs> Bric-a-brac. How did you find out the cat had been killed? Because it was uh, killed regrettably close to our house. What kind of cat was it? A tabby cat. And how was it killed, sorry? Unfortunately, it was a truck that shouldn't have been... Uh, it was one of the very... Not just a normal size lorry, a very, very long uh, lorry that should not really have thought that it could drive around those streets but was attempting to, and it flattened. Um... So you actually saw the lorry flatten the cat and then you had to go and tell the neighbour? Uh, yeah. I feel like this is the truth, except for the part about the truck and that actually you killed this cat. <laughs> <laughs> what was the cat called? Uh, she was called, um... She was called Jenny. Jenny! Jenny! The cat. Jenny. <laughs> Jenny! What was the owner called? Tiddles? <laughs> <laughs> no, in a horrible <laughs> name <laughs> mix-up, <laughs> they started calling each other by the wrong name. <laughs> if you want to find, you know, find fault with someone's cat naming logic, you've got to have a go at my neighbours. Well, they're Just grieving. Think. Let's leave them out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did you, you kill their cat? I didn't. I just, I you say you didn't kill the cat. You might have been partly responsible because you were there dressed as a cat when it happened. It might have been the driver of the dressed truck. dressed as a cat. I has, just... <laughs> has looked over and gone, size of that cat. <laughs> Meanwhile, the little cat crossed in the road has gone, is that your mummy? <laughs> Those two incidents combined, you've killed little oh. Jennifer to give her her full name. <laughs> no, just Either that or it was a hit aimed for you and the description given <laughs> looks a bit like a cat. <laughs> did you pick the cat up oh, and I... take it to the neighbours or did you just point to the cat and say, that's where your cat is? <clears throat> no. uh, I, didn't, I didn't pick it up. What happened when they answered the door? Like, talk us through that conversation, because that must have been very awkward. Yeah, had you still, at this point, not remembered that your face was painted like No, that? I didn't remember until after I told them, and then I went home and went, oh, I just had to tell so-and-so. So, -and -so. so you, they've opened the door. Can you remember anything about the first few words of that conversation? Well, it was very awkward. I've never had to do that before. So I, I said... Meow! <laughs> 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 they, they said, hello, in a sort of cheery, or oh, maybe he's come round for yeah. some sort of jolly reason. Well, don't give them that impression. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, I'm really sorry, but I'm afraid that I've, I've just seen um, uh, Jenny get get run over. And they said... What? Did, what did they say then? <laughs> oh, sorry, you're they acting. They said what? I thought you were asking me, sorry. <laughs> I genuinely thought you didn't understand the question, but you were in character, sorry. Yeah. If we get to a point where you're asking questions I don't understand, something uh. has happened. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's a regular by that one. <laughs> uh, and they said, thank you very much for telling us. And then I went back into my house, I live next door, and... Did you go through the front door or...? Back... <laughs> <laughs> when you realised you had your makeup on still at home? My, which my wife pointed out to me. I came home and I said, oh, this dreadful thing's just happened. And my wife said, you know that you've still got your face painted like a kitten? And I said, oh, no. <laughs> Did you and your wife look at each other in shock and just feel terrible, or did you both instantly start laughing? She laughed immediately. I'm... She's an awful woman, though. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Ignore the Irish man. <laughs> you're the best female truck driver in the world. <laughs> So what are you thinking, Lee? Does this have the uh, the ring of truth for you? Uh, Amelia, what do we think? I think it's a total lie. Do you? Not do even you? An, an ounce of truth in this? Not for me. It's going round to the neighbours and you haven't really actually told us anything about the neighbours. You haven't talked about who it was who answered the door and how you then got to talk to them. Mm. Oh, right, well, Paul answered the door. Paul. Paul. <laughs> and Paul is married to... Paul is not married. Oh, but you did say them. You told them that their cat had died. Yeah, there are a number of ways in which people cohabit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. You don't believe I it? Don't believe you it. don't believe it. Are right. we going to say a lie? Say a lie. Say a lie. OK. <clears throat> Miles, truth or lie? Oh, ye of little... It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> this is my old neighbour, Gareth. And when I was learning a song, he would distract me by singing the same song in his own flat but in a different language. How do you know Gareth? This is Gareth. He was the rickshaw driver I once paid to pedal me home. By the time we arrived, he was so exhausted, I let him stay on my sofa. 
<laughs> so there we have it. Um, Gareth's synchronised singer, Richard's pointless punter, or Greg's shattered chauffeur. David's team, who do you want to start with? Gareth. Uh, what language does he sing the song in, or does it vary? Um, uh, he was singing in English. And what... So what were you singing? German. Ah. What song? Um, I think... Uh, I think it was Bach's St Matthew Passion. That's what I thought it would be. Yeah, uh, yeah. How... <laughs> so how often did this happen? Enough for, it, for me to remember to mention it now. Because... <laughs> <laughs> If a neighbour was singing a song next door to me, the first thing I'd do would be uh, to I... translate it back to so English. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Sing it as an off-putting kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Especially through a wall. That really cuts deep. <laughs> How does it go, Gareth? I can't remember it in English. You don't really want to hear it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like um... to hear it as if you're frightened. <laughs> Da Jesus diese Rede vollendet hatte, sprach er zu seine Jungen. Da, 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 da. And he was singing exactly the same song, well, the other side of a wall. Yeah, in, I mean, actually, um, in English. I think up, upper semitone. So he's, he's your neighbour, he's also called Gareth, yeah. he's singing the same song in a different language right. and a semitone uh, different. It's almost <laughs> unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Greg, t tell us your story. Um, Not your whole life, you no. know, just... Uh, <laughs> just a rickshaw bit. Yeah. I yeah. had a, a, a very big celebration in the, the centre of town. Oh, what? What reason? I was, I was celebrating uh, leaving teaching. <laughs> OK. So uh, I had a very big celebration just after my last night at school. OK. Which mm -hmm. uh, it was ludicrously big. OK. You emerged from the bar in question. Yeah. A little worse for wear. I was off offensively drunk. <laughs> a rickshaw. Yeah. Why? Uh, if I'm honest, I was showing off. I, it had been, been a day of showing off. How, how far did you have to take, Gareth? It, it was... He had to take me from Central London to Hounslow, which is... Hounslow? Yeah. <laughs> it's something like... It's just shy of ten miles. How much was it? It was £163. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take, roughly? Um, I mean, I honestly don't you know. Don't, you don't I honestly don't, I don't gonna, know. I thought you were waiting for the length of time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you arrive. Yeah. You, you, you give him his money. When does the whole idea of offering him... A bed for the night. I, I didn't... We didn't even discuss the money because I got off uh, the bike and uh, by which point I was incredibly sober and I looked at his face and it was... Uh, <laughs> it was grey. I mean, I genuinely feared for his life. So I said, oh, my God, you must come in for a bit. And I made him a cup of tea. We're better than that, guys. Great. We're better than that. Where did, where did he put his rickshaw? Is that, is that you? <laughs> How did it progress from the cup of tea to the <laughs> sleep? <laughs> because, because honestly, I, I, I was sober by the time he I got He didn't say cup of tea, he said, would you like to come in for a bit? Yeah. <laughs> Ex exhausted from the bit. Biscuits! Biscuits! <laughs> fell asleep on the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> now, let, 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 let's be clear, you, you, you've invited him up for a bit, you go in... <laughs> What happens? After the cup of tea, I decided that he was clearly still very close to death. <laughs> so I said, uh, would you like to crash on the sofa? And I'll give you a, an extra little detail. As he went past my front garden, he said, what is that? Because I had set fire to my teaching outfit before I'd gone out <laughs> when my friends first came round, and there was half of a trouser leg left. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Gareth saw it and went, is that half a trouser leg? Has, <laughs> <You've> has <laughs> someone spontaneously combusted? <laughs> 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 so, we need an answer. So, uh, David's team uh, is Gareth. Gareth Malone's synchronised singer. Is he Richard's pointless punter? Or is he Greg's shattered chauffeur? I've got a horrible feeling he's the pointless punter after all of that. You now, think, I think pointless punter? Yeah. See, I'm thinking rickshaw driver. Yeah, the detail that Greg was giving was. The detail of incredible. the burnt trouser yeah. leg is. That was like he'd forgotten himself and he was getting into his story. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited. But, but, you're, well, but you're discounting Gareth altogether? Oh, completely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so you're going, you're going for the two, the two tall yeah. guys there, the two lanky dudes. Hey. Um, you know what? We're just two guys. We're just two people, well, all right. The two, the two lampposts there. We're just. Um, <laughs> so, David, what are you going to say? You, um, you, you, uh, I'm going. I'm going to because I don't. I genuinely. You're care, abstaining. So I, I'm going to go with the team captain's final decision. If I had a gun to your head, though, Amanda, and don't rule it out, <laughs> who would you go for? Greg. You'd go. You go for Greg. All right. Or Rich. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I think Greg. You think Greg now? Oh no. We'll say Greg. We'll say Greg. Let's They're yeah. saying that it is Greg. Not... Gareth. <laughs> it's a point that's contested. Would you please? <laughs> I've taken your answer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Would you now observe the rules of yeah. the game yeah. and please <clears throat> treat this with a little more respect? <laughs> Gareth, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Gareth, and I once distracted Gareth. <laughs> I once livened up a lackluster Hindu by taking my clothes off for the ladies. I don't know much about religious cultures. What is a lackluster Hindu? <laughs> Hindu. Oh, there was a, there was a misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? Yeah, uh, I was in Menorca. The, yeah, there was a group of girls sort of wandering around a little bit forlorn, like, you know. <laughs> was it a restaurant, Mickey? A town square, a restaurant? What was it? It was in a sort of restaurant bar type I thing. I know what you mean. You know, yeah. with an outside area. Who were you with? I was with my now wife and someone else's wife and, you know. <laughs> I just went around asking various wives if they had to <laughs> spend time in Spain with me. So what did you do again? She was... I could see the girl sort of walking around tables talking to men. And then suddenly she came up to me and said, oh, would you do a um, strip for us? And your now wife and your then wife were like, go ahead. <laughs> My wife's a very open-minded person. Hey, and, uh... you, you don't have to tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, she said, will you do a strip? To be honest with you, I initially said no. And it was my wife who went, you should do it. Why? Because <laughs> I'm a great dancer. Uh... <laughs> Mickey, is there any chance you could give us some visual proof? Because you just said you're a great dancer. If I could see a bit, then I may believe the story a bit more. No, I can't, I, to be honest, I can't remember what I did. Oh! <laughs> see you, I see. <laughs> Dear group pressure. Um, it's, yeah, it's not a group, really. It's just one person. <laughs> yeah. Come on, the TV It recording. can spread, though, Dave. Yeah. I've seen it spread. <laughs> so, go on, Mickey. So, th th there you were in the restaurant. Your wife said, go on, Mickey, have yeah. a strip. What happened next? I sort of then had to set the scene. Set the scene? Did you have props? Not <laughs> props, but I know I need a stage and a pole. <laughs> I don't think male strippers have poles, do they? Why not? A man can swing round a pole, yeah. can't they? I think you're thinking of modest dancers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I told him to play Keep Your Hat On, classic. And I sort of it just improvised from so there, So, just really. by complete coincidence, they had the song you asked for? Yeah, well, I went and checked with the DJ. What kind of restaurant was it? I would say dubious. <laughs> I, I, I think the sort of restaurant where there's a DJ and a pole, oh. you start to yeah. doubt the quality of the paella. <laughs> and how much did you take off? I sort of got to my pants, and then I could see across the restaurant, bar, diner, alfresco area, oh, my right wife went to me. <laughs> Even though ten minutes earlier she said, you should strip for them, they're sad. They're having a rubbish time. I said she was open-minded. She's got standards. <laughs> <laughs> no, she hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I want to try and set this scene. You're there, the hen is there, your two wives are there. We're wondering, <laughs> is he going to do it, is he going to do it? <laughs> You scamper up to the DJ, you have a word, and you say, hit it. Oh, no. uh, 
behalf of the BBC, <laughs> I offer a full <laughs> and profound apology. Please don't press charges. <laughs> OK. What are you thinking, Lee? Here's my problem. Is I think that a gang of girls who are on a hen aren't lacklustre. If you've already got on a plane, you've committed. You're in. You're on board. But, Claudia, I would say that once I'd got over the slight kind of, oh, my God, what's going on thing, there was a moment yeah. when Mookie put his knee <laughs> on my shoulder. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> this has gone from lacklustre to Stella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't see a part of Stella after that. <laughs> <laughs> So, what are you thinking? Uh, I don't know. This is a tough one because I, there, there's something about Mickey that says he yeah, would do it. Of course he would. Yeah. <laughs> this is not real. It's horribly vague. It's all over the shop. So you think it's a lie? You I, think it's? I think it's totally true. We'll go with true. Okay, Mickey, truth or lie? It is true. <laughs> For five days, I pushed my cat around in a pram. <laughs> Because it had sprained three of its ankles. <laughs> David's team. OK, the two key questions here. How did it sprain three of its ankles? And why was it necessary for it to be so mobile during its recovery period? <laughs> OK, I'll address those. One of my children, my eldest boy, mm. um, didn't throw a tyre at it, but threw a, a tyre, a car tyre, yeah. and it hit the cat. He threw the tyre recreationally... <laughs> and... <laughs> And the cat got in the way. How did one ankle survive? <laughs> Luckily, he was scratching his head at the time. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the tyre hits the cat. Yes. 75% of the cat's ankles are, did you say, sprained? Well, they were bruised and we were told that he mustn't walk. So he was told he mustn't walk, but, but, he, but he needed still to travel. Of course he did, yes. Yeah. It was my younger boy's buggy we put him in. It's right. Because like you could strap him in. You could strap the cat into the buggy? <laughs> yeah. How did you strap the cat into the buggy? Using the straps and... <laughs> the only journey he had to make was to the litter tray. <laughs> so we just used to take him from the front room round to the litter tray. Tip strap him, him in. in and strap the him in. Tip him in. Why didn't you just carry him? Mm. <laughs> no. Because he had these bandages round his legs, but he would insist on trying to walk, which we knew would make his ankles worse. You and couldn't stop him walking, but you, he would consent to be strapped into a buggy. It's not really... A, it's not... When it comes to pets, it's not, not really a matter of consent, David. Never <laughs> use the phrase, when it comes to pets, it's not a matter of consent. <laughs> you can get into all sorts of problems yeah. with that. <laughs> oh. Tell us more about this cat. What was its name? Its name was Good Monson. It was a... What? <laughs> Bob the name of anything <laughs> in the story. <laughs> and we learned nothing. His name's Good Monson. Good Monson. Good Monson. Monson Good. as in the word monsoon no, with Monson. an O missing. <laughs> yes. Right. Good Monson. His name's Good Monson. He's a tabby oriental. Why, why Good Monson? Why, why, why? My, yeah, my younger son named him Good Monson. All right. right. David, what are you thinking? What do you think? Oh, he's lying. <laughs> you think he's lying? Yep, lying. You think he's a... Well, this is a superb moment. <laughs> I, uh, unanimity from the team. So, let's say... It's, it's a it's, lie. We'll say it's a lie. Bob, good monson. Truth or lie? I am telling <laughs> a lie. <laughs> oh, superb! We got a point! We got a point! We got a point! <laughs> it's Joe. Last year, I made my husband a birthday meal using some mints I found in the street. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what... Why... Well, why? <laughs> why would you do that? I found a carrier bag on the pavement that, right. that amongst other things, had mints in it. What I don't know whether it? someone had left, left it there, whether yeah. they dropped it... What it wasn't like being noticed. clutched by, like, an old woman who was lying on the... <laughs> You're not being convenient with the truth here, are you? <laughs> All right, I slapped her out the way. <laughs> <laughs> what, was it, what else was in the bag? Uh, well, there was mints, and it was wrapped up in, in kind of a plastic... Like, in a, one of those cardboard dishes, plastic over it, so yeah. it wasn't, lo <laughs> wasn't yeah. loose. Oh, yeah, it um, sounds perfectly hygienic. Yeah, well, it was hygienic. How do you know, like, a dog hadn't weed on it? I know it was in the cellophane, Cos but... Cos I sniffed it. <laughs> Did you not have any... You can't buy class, can you? 
What did you cook him with the mince? Well, I can only cook two things, a spag bowl and macaroni cheese. Which one did you go for? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've known you for a while, Joe. Can I just check? Is it your current husband or the first one who died of food poisoning? <laughs> Uh, my one and only husband. Okay. Oh, it's Chesney Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think, Lee? I don't know. What do you think, Ray? Is this bad enough? Let's say true. True? I think false. You think it's a lie? <laughs> You're saying lie. You're saying true. true. I'm going to say lie. You're saying lie? Yeah. OK. Joe, truth or lie? It is, of course, a <laughs> lie. Oh. <laughs> Rather than use a flannel or a sponge, I wash with an orange. <laughs> <laughs> David's team, what do you think? H how do you... How do you... <laughs> <laughs> how do you use the orange? Well, I mean, you know, citrus, <laughs> citrus fruits are... <laughs> <laughs> Instinctively, I think Carol doesn't believe it. <laughs> Either that or she's <laughs> Look, I mean, citrus, citrus fruits are known to be very good for your skin. So if you cut an orange in half mm -hmm. and you use it on your face, the citrus oh. goes into your pores. You use both halves like that? Absolutely. <laughs> Saves time, that, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> then you wash it off with, with water, just with your hands, and then the best bit is to then take the other side of the orange and buff your skin. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is a northern man's nightmare, <laughs> washing and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm 73. And, uh, <laughs> it's, honestly, it's fantastic. And you smell so fabulous. Can I, uh, <laughs> can I come over and have a smell? Oh, the old Welsh chat-up line, right? <laughs> I should be able to smell it, yeah? I should be able to smell... <laughs> the best evidence, of course, is before she started doing this, she used to have black hair. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't smell any orange. Did you not? No. Right. You told me no. earlier today that you had a stinking cold. Yeah. I have got a stinking cold. Well, so there you that. go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise you had a blocked nose, allow me. <laughs> orange. <laughs> Exfoliating creams that have orange or citrus in. None of them are an actual orange, though. <laughs> you know, I've seen shampoos with coconut in, but I've never actually washed my hair just with a coconut. <laughs> that would be exfoliating, though, wouldn't it? The outside of a coconut. Oh, you can, you can, no you question. You can coconut. absolutely you can draw blood drink. with that. <laughs> my question oh. here: What you're going to get then is orange juice on your face. <laughs> but I would say, if I dirtied my face with orange juice, I would need something like soap in order to wash the orange juice <laughs> properly off. Otherwise, I'd be going out into the world, essentially, with a soft drink on my face. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Does this ring any bells with you, Carol? No, I know, obviously, there are things where, you, you know, that things are scented with citrus oils and all of that kind of thing. Never heard of oranges. Carol, cut to the chase. A wet orange peel is no exfoliator. No. <laughs> I no. would live and die by that statement. Yeah. <laughs> it get, you know, what it does is it gets all the... No, it doesn't. It does! <laughs> so we think it's a lie? Yeah. Right? Oh, I'm a, I don't oh think absolutely. It. OK, you're going to say lie. Kelly Hoppen, were you telling the truth then? Or were you telling it a lie? It is a lie. Yay! I once accidentally left a goldfish on top of a petrol pump. <laughs> Please, team. OK. When was this? About in the late 90s. The Is late it... 90s? That's Where quite Where'd you got old. this goldfish from that you were at a petrol pump with it? I was basically in a car uh -huh. uh, with uh, some friends of mine and we were driving... Um, we were driving back from the Edinburgh Festival uh -huh. and the goldfish had been a prop. Is it in a bowl or a plastic bag? It's... it's it, neither. What's it what? in? It's in a sort of Tupperware. But, it, but it's got water in, right? Y yes. And, and holes in the top? Yeah. Uh, yes, but none in the bottom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we stopped for some petrol, and I fancied stretching my legs, cos I was sitting in the passenger seat with a goldfish on my knee. 
Right. You and were travelling back with it on your knee? Well, what, how would you...? I wouldn't be so selfish. I'd have gone by submarine and towed it. <laughs> 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 but I'm different to you. I'm far more keeping than well, you. I, I think you have an exaggerated idea of how wide Britain's canals are. <laughs> because if, if you tried to take it by sea, the salt would have killed it, you yeah. barbarian. <laughs> oh, it wasn't the salted goldfish. <laughs> a salted goldfish is a starter. This was a pet. <laughs> so you rested it on top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now talk us through what happens next. Um, I, I, I get out of the car. Yeah. With the goldfish, mm -hmm. put it on the petrol pump again. No, no, no. I'm sort of, <laughs> I'm, I'm rewinding a bit. Oh right. So all right, I'll rephrase um, the question. I... Tell us what happens next. But before that, go back ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> because right. quite frankly, well, that was the gripping bit of the anecdote. I'd like to hear it again. <laughs> so go on. Then you all get back in the car. Yeah, and we drive off. How far had you gone? I think it was, it was several miles. I at this point realise. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling sort of more comfortable and less sort of stiff and clammy oh. than I have been for the first bit of the journey. And then I realised, oh, hang on, we've left the goldfish wow. behind. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what do you think, Lizzie? Telling the truth? June. Please. I mean, I don't see why it's so important, but I think. Well, I wouldn't say. <laughs> I wouldn't say so much important as we were just engaging with the, the basic premise of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think then? Come on now. Well. Now uh, you put me under pressure, and now I realise it's like to be a guest. I'm They're genuinely right. worried. You see what I mean? It's horrible, isn't it? Don't make us do it. You do it. Now, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, he hasn't made an actual decision since series four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just realised what everyone else says. I didn't know I was going to be asked what I think. June, we'll go for it. The women will decide. Oh. Yes, brilliant. All right, it's a lie. Yes. You say it's we a lie. You say it's a lie. In that case, true. We could have asked. <laughs> We think it's a lie. So a lie, you're saying lie. Oh, lie. I'll go for a lie. So, David, the goldfish in the petrol station, truth or lie? It is true. Oh, yeah. no! <laughs> yes, it's true. David did once accidentally leave a goldfish on top of a petrol pump. I once licked David Bowie's cake just to be close to him. <laughs> David. Now, I would have thought that was not a good way of being close to him, but that was a way of being forcibly removed from his presence. <laughs> so how did licking his cake bring you close to him? Right, so, um, it was the 1980s. I believe it was the year of the Glass Spider tour. Yeah. I was working <laughs> as a waitress... In a cocktail. In a cocktail bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not a Bowie song. Uh, yeah, I was going to yeah, say, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. no expert, but that's not one of his. <laughs> that, that much is true. Right. <laughs> Thank you. And... So, Mel, if you yes. were working as a waitress... It wasn't a cocktail bar, it was a cappuccino bar, cos it right. was the 80s. So I was working as a waitress in a cappuccino <laughs> bar. Hang on, was um, cappuccino popular in the 80s? Let's get this... Yeah, they came in in the 80s, didn't they? They arrived in Port Talbot a week last Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I'm not quite uh, good-looking enough slash slim enough to be serving at tables. Okay? Oh, right. So did they tell you this? Did they, did they say, I'm sorry, love, you, I'm sorry. No. I can't have you serving the customers, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have Just to hide really you round enough. the back yes. making the froth. No, pretty, <laughs> pr pretty much. I was, I was a washer-upper in oh. aforementioned cappuccino bar. Now, massive excitement one day. I'm in the back doing the washing up. The word is spreading like wildfire. Bowie's in, Bowie's in, Bowie's in. I saw him in profile sitting How did you see him from at the, the kitchen? cappuccino bar because I could look yeah. right. through the door. <laughs> you were allowed. <laughs> Occasionally. And all the customers went. She <laughs> 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 was grabbed back in again and manic. Get back in the <laughs> trap and sprinkles pit. <laughs> so, Bowie had ordered, let's imagine, I think it was something like a sort of uh, a hot chocolate fudge slice, please, or something like that. Can we get on to the licking? Let's yeah. get on to the licking. <laughs> it's like Friday night in my house. <laughs> I thought, huh? I'm not going to get to say hello to him because I'm not allowed to go out front and serve the man, hmm. so what can I do just to feel that I have entered him oh my God. in some way? Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, just... Yes, yeah, so some of, of your him. DNA I'm part has of been ingested by the great man. <laughs> well, what sort of lick? With, with, bearing in mind that this is very much a family show, do the lick for us. Now. Plate. Yeah? Slice. Yeah? It would have been... 
I'll just try and get back in the zone. Oh. Yeah. It would have just been a... Like so it's just a little bit. That's not what I imagined, cat. actually. Oh. I thought I thought you would go up and down it a couple of times. No, no it's just a just a little a just polite a, just lick. A touch. It was it was full of homage and reverence for the great man. And, and then obviously it went out, and I never saw him again. It wasn't long after that he was hospitalised. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, what are you thinking? Could this um, be true? It, well, it could be true, but. Uh, the, the, you know, she started off as a waitress, then she became, you know... A washer-upper. A washer-upper. Yes. I think it sounds so absurd, and she's been so random, that I think there's an element of truth to it, personally. So what are you going to say, David? Is it truth or is it a lie? Well, one or the other. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think, on balance, it's a lie. You're going to say a lie? So, Mel, licking David Bowie's cake, is it true or was it a lie? It is... a great fat... True! Oh. What? Oh.